Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Beto. Production-ready apps need to be tested thoroughly. And that's why in today's video, we're going to learn how to write end-to-end -end test using Maestro for your Expo app. We'll also cover how to test EAS builds and how to install Maestro to run tests locally. So let's dive right in. So before we start, guys, I want to mention that we have this guide, run end-to-end -end test on EAS build in our expo documentation so i'll leave the link in the description as well and as well i would recommend that you check out the maestro documentation to learn more about how to install and how to do specific things okay so now that being said let's go ahead and create a new project so i'll just go to my test folder and say yarn create expo app and the name is going to be end to end test example of course, you can name this as you want. And if you already have a project, that's totally fine. And just to make sure that we are on the same page, you also need an Expo account. If you don't have one, just go to expo.dev because we're going to be building this on EAS, right? Okay, and the project is ready. So let's go ahead and CD into the end-to-end -end test example. And let's open this in VS Code. Now let's configure EAS build for our project. To do that, we need to run the command EAS init. By the way, if you don't have the CLI installed, or if you don't know, you can simply check by running EAS version, and you should be able to see the version that you are running. And if you don't have it installed, you can simply say npm install globally EAS CLI. Okay, you can run that command. Now, once we have EAS, we can say EAS init. This is going to create a new project, and it's asking me to select the account. In this case, I'll select my personal, and I'll say yes. Okay, so this is creating this project on Expo. And if I reload, um, you should be able to see that now I have this end-to-end -end test project. Okay, so let's go back to the project and now we can run EAS build configure um, and let's configure all platforms. So let's hit enter. This is going to generate this EAS JSON which is going to contain build profiles. By default, it comes with development, preview, and production. Okay, so we're going to be adding an extra profile here in a moment, but let's leave this as it is for now. Next, we need to disable the new Android build infrastructure for our project. So if we go to our project in the Expo dashboard, uh, we can scroll down all the way to project settings, and you'll find this use new Android builds infrastructure. So this uh, infrastructure makes your builds 40% faster, but unfortunately, the new build infrastructure is incompatible with end-to-end -end tests due to the lack of virtualization support required to start the Android emulator. So this is just for Android. And don't worry though, we are working with the current infrastructure and Expo is continuously improving support for end-to-end -end testing. So let's go ahead and disable this. And now we're ready to start uh, creating some end-to-end -end tests. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with Maestro, Maestro is a powerful tool for running end-to-end -end tests on mobile apps. And it allows you to write simple YAML files that describe the user interactions. So first I'll create a directory called Maestro in the root of my project. So let's say Maestro. And inside this, I'll create a new file, uh, which is going to be my first flow. And in this case, I'll call this flow home.yaml. So pretty simple so far. Inside this directory, we are going to be adding all the flows that we want to run uh, for our end-to-end -end test. And while we are typing this, let me just go ahead and run my application. Now, we can run end-to-end -end test using Expo Go. In a more real-world scenario, you're going to be using a development build. So let's go ahead and pre-build our application. So I'll say npx expo pre-build, and I'll pre-build for both platforms. I'll select the default package and bundle identifier. Okay, the pre-build is ready, so I'll say yarn iOS. Um, this is going to start building the application on my simulator on the right. By the way, this is going to work as well on Android. Um, the only difference is that if you want to run this test on Android, you need to boot the Android emulator. And if you want to run this on iOS, just open the iOS simulator. Like in this case, it's the only one that I have opened. Now we're good to start creating this test. A couple of things that we need to do, first of all, is has the app ID. And the app ID, you can actually get it from the app JSON. 
and from the bundle identifier. So this is my app ID. Let's go ahead and copy this and paste it in here and hit save. So this is going to tell Maestro which application to open or which application to test for this flow. And if you want to use Expo Go, that's totally fine. Just keep in mind that you have to use the host Expo exponent. This is a bundle identifier for Expo Go. Okay, I'll just leave this comment for now uh, for those who want to, you know, use Expo Go. Um, after that, we need to add a three dashes like this, and then we can start defining the test. First of all, and in most cases, you want to launch the app. So let's go ahead and say launch app. This is uh, very simple. We just need to type launch app. And if you want to learn more about these actions, you can go to the uh, Maestro documentation. And in here, you can keep on going and start validating some stuff. So first of all, I want to assert visible. And this assert visible uh, takes like a string in this case. In this case, I'll say welcome. And basically what I'm saying here is just opening the app and then validating that there is a text on the app that says welcome. And this is a maestro test. Now, some important things is that you have to make sure that you're using the right app ID. And also you need to have the app already installed on the simulator before you run this test. All right, so before we can actually run this test, we need to install uh, Maestro. And this is the official documentation of Maestro. I'm gonna leave the link in the description. Uh, but if you go to the installing Maestro, you should be able to find this curl command that you can simply Oops, that you can simply copy. So I'll just go ahead and copy this and go back to my project. And in a terminal, you can paste this. So let's go ahead and open a new terminal and paste this so that we can uh, install Maestro. In the meantime, our app is ready, as you can see here. So let's go ahead and open it. Okay, and the app is ready. So this is the Hello World application that comes with the Expo template. And as you can see, we have a welcome text that's why I added this validation because I already know that there is a welcome text in there. And once we uh, run this curl command, we are able to see that Maestro has been installed in our computer. So to test this, we can check the version by running Maestro dash B. Uh, let me clear this terminal. Let's go back in here. And now we're actually good to start running this test. Now the app is running, keep that in mind. So let's go to the other terminal and cd into the Maestro folder. And from here, I can say Maestro test and then pass the name of the flow that I want to run. In this case, it's going to be home.yaml. Let's hit enter and see what happens. Okay, the app is launching and the assertion is true. Okay, and just like that, we have created a Maestro test. Now, of course, in the real world, you might want to do something more complex. So let's try to create uh, something a bit more complex. I'll go ahead and create a new uh, flow. In this case, it's going to be expand test.yaml and hit enter. By the way, we can maybe just come here and copy some of these things. Okay, so the app ID is going to be the same one. We want to launch the app at the beginning. And from here, we can, uh, you know, we can start validating something more complex. For example, let's say that once I open the app, I want to navigate to the Explore tab. So in this case, we can simply say tab on, which is an action uh, that we are saying Maestro to do. Um, and then I want to tap on the Explore button. Now let's hit Save. Um, let's see if this works. Let's run this test. In this case, it's going to be expand test.yaml and hit enter. So in this case, we should launch the app and then tap on the explore tab. Let's see if this works. Okay. And after a moment, it's going to fail. Hmm, interesting. So the reason for why this is failing, it's because, or, or I mean, it's taking time and then it's going to fail. It's because we need to um, kind of tell Maestro that we want to check the entire screen, right? Um, and in this case, we want to use regex expressions to validate that um, 
anything that has the explore text, no matter if it has something in front or in front of it, uh, we can say dot asterisk and hit save. So basically this is going to explore everything and even in this case, the explore, if the explore uh, button has something in front of it, it's going to pick it up. So let's try to run this again. And let's keep on adding maybe something else. Okay. And as you can see, now it's working because I added this regex expression. And you're going to learn more about this in a moment. But after we go to the explore screen, I want to tap on the file based routing. So this is something similar. Um, this is an expandable and we can define it as file based routing just by typing the text. Um, but be because this has like an icon before before it, uh, we can say, okay, don't worry about what is before of this. Uh, so we can simply say dot asterisks before. And then um, this is how we can assure that Maestro is going to pick this file based routing. Okay, so if I run this again, uh, we should be able to now go to the explore and then tap on file based routing. Cool. From here, we can actually start validating some stuff like assert visible, and then we can say this app has two screens. Okay, so just the, the first phrase here, and then let's hit save. But of course, as you might imagine by now, we have more text, text and stuff after this. So if we want to validate that, uh, if we want to make sure that Maestro is going to pick this up, we can say dot asterisk, which is basically saying, if this text has something uh, in front of it or after it, don't worry, just validate that at least we have this piece, okay? So let's go ahead and hit save. Let's run this again. And this should be true. Okay, so it's launching the app. Tap on explore. Tap on Firebase routing and validate that we have this text. Cool, so this is working fine. And from here, we can maybe, you know, continue going. We can tap again on the Firebase routing, which is going to close this. And then from here, maybe we can type on the images, right? So let's duplicate this. Let's type on images. And from here, we can have an assertion as well. So you can start building these more complex flows. Um, and in this case, I want to validate that we have a learn more text. Now, in this case, I won't provide a regex expression in here because learn more, it's an isolated text. It doesn't have anything before or after is just a text. Um, that's why I don't need to pass the dot asterisk. Okay. After that, um, I'll assert that learn more is visible. I'll tap again on images. Um, and maybe before I do that, I can scroll a little bit. So we can say scroll and hit save. So if you want to learn, uh, as I mentioned before, more about the actions that Maestro can do, just go to their documentation and you'll find some useful things like scroll, right? So let's run this again. Um, so once we assert that we have the learn more button, we're going to have a simple scroll. So it's doing it. It's pressing on explore, opening, validating, closing, opening images, scrolling, validating, closing again. Okay, and this is working fine. So after that, I want to go to the home screen. So let's type on in this case, it's going to be home. Okay, so this is going to take me back to the home screen. Um, let's run the test once again and see if this works. Let me go ahead and save this as well. Okay, it's doing it. It's going to the explore, opening, closing, opening images, scroll, learn more, closing, go back home. Awesome. Now, um, I want to show you something cool before we actually start building this on EAS. Um, and let's go to the home screen. Uh, something very useful, it's going to be typing in a text input, right? So inside this, I'll just create a text input. Uh, I'll import this from React Native and, the, and just so that everyone is able to see this, um, I'll say font size of 32. 
and I'll add a placeholder that says enter some text and hit save. Okay, so here we have it. And if I press on it, we have the keyboard. So this is working fine. Um, the way you enter text, it's actually very simple. We can simply tap on the input. Now, one cool thing that we can do actually, an important thing that I want to mention. So referring to these items by text, it's okay. But I think it's better if we use some kind of ID and we can add a test ID to each of um, to each element. So in this case, I'll say input ID. Okay. Or maybe you can call it like input email or something like that. But in this case, I'll just say input ID and we can reference this input by ID. So I can do that by saying ID and then passing the ID. So in this case, I'll just go ahead and copy this come back and paste it in here. And this is how we're going to be tapping on this element. So once we do that, I want to enter text and we can do that by saying input text and then the text that I want to input. So I can say I'm entering text and we can even add an emoji. Hit save and let's try to see if this works. I'm going to run this again. Okay, so it's doing the entire flow launching the app, going to the explorer, doing some stuff in there, scrolling, validating. And after a second, you should go back to the home screen and type in my text input. Awesome. That is great. And I didn't do anything. This is great because you don't have to type, you know, your email and password all the time. Maybe you can simply run a test and then you are just signing in your application. This can save you time actually. Okay, so we have written some cool end-to-end -end test locally and we are ready to start um, building this on EAS. Now, uh, we need to tell EAS that we're gonna be testing our application using Maestro. And the way we do that, it's by creating a custom build flow. So in my project, I'll go ahead and create a new folder called .eas. So inside this folder, we can, um, do some configuration for EAS and inside this EAS folder, I'll create a build directory. So I'll start specifying some custom stuff for EAS build. So let's go ahead and create a new file and I'll name this file build and maestro test.yaml. You can name this file as you want. The important thing here is actually the configuration that we're going to um, specify in a moment. And you can reference to this custom build uh, flow in the guide. So if we go to this section, you'll see that we have this build and maestro test. So let's go ahead and copy this and let's analyze it in here. So we are saying uh, to EAS build that we want to do something um, different, right? Not just the normal build, but in this case, we want to create a build and run maestro test on it. So um, the steps are as follows. First of all, um, inside EAS build, we are going to have this EAS maestro test. And just by having this flag in here, we are telling EAS build that the worker that is going to be building our application needs to have maestro install, installed on it. So this is going to ensure that once we start running these flows, the worker is going to have um, maestro and everything is going to work as expected. Now the flow path, it's important you need to specify where are these tests. So these tests are inside the maestro folder and the names are expand test and home YAML. Okay, so make sure that you are typing this correctly and you're passing the correct path. So let's go ahead and hit save. This is all the configuration, um, the custom config that EAS needs in order to run the test. And now the only thing that we need to do is modify the EAS.json. We need to create a new build profile for the test. So after production, I'll create a new profile. My profile is going to be build and maestro test, which is the name of the YAML that I created up here on the left. And inside this uh, build profile, we can start configuring some stuff like, for example, without credentials equal to true. Since we are going to be building on simulators, we don't need to sign in. And then we can pass config. The configuration is going to be the YAML that we have in here. So let's go ahead and copy this. Just go ahead and copy the entire thing uh, and put it in here. The configuration 
it's telling EAS that we need Maestro and which test to run for this profile. Furthermore, we can specify platform specific things. Like for example, on Android, I want to say that the build type is going to be APK and the image is going to be latest. So let's go ahead and hit save. We can do something very similar for iOS. So I'll just go ahead and copy this, change this to be iOS. In this case, instead of build type, it's going to be simulator equal to true because we want to run this on a simulator, right? We're using the latest image because we have noticed that some of the builds that are running on end-to-end -end test are timing out. So make sure that you're using the latest image. And that's all the configuration we need for this specific profile. Now let's go ahead and kick this build. I'll go ahead and close this and stop my server since I won't be using my local environment anymore. And I'll just go ahead and say EAS build and I'll specify the profile, which is build and maestro test. So let's say build and maestro test and let's go ahead and hit enter. Um, this is going to ask me if I want to run this test for both platforms. So let's say yes, all platforms. And this is going to uh, start building for iOS and Android. And from here, we can actually go and check the progress on the Expo dashboard. So I'm here selecting my end-to-end -end test example. And if we go to the build section, all builds, you're going to find that these builds are in progress. The iOS, it's going to be the first one. So um, in here, you can track the progress. Usually this is going to take a couple minutes, so let's wait. All right, and after a moment, we can see all the logs for our application. But the important part, I would say, after the run fast lane and find the builds and upload the build artifacts, um, the worker is installing Maestro because we basically specify the custom build and we said, okay, we need Maestro for this flow. And once it's installing Maestro, it's starting the iOS simulator. So it's getting ready to start running this test. Okay, so after it starts the simulator, installs the app on a simulator, um, and finally it's running the Maestro test, and we should be able to see the output in here in a moment. First of all, it's running the home.yaml, which is going to launch the app and just validate that we have the welcome text. Okay, and the flow is running, as you can see. It's using an iPhone 16, iOS 18, which is great. And it was completed. Awesome. Great. Now it's running the other flow, which is Maestro Expand. And this is going to be a more complex flow. Let's see if it, if it uh, gets it done. And the tests are completed. Awesome. So this means that our app is ready for production. And we enter text as well. Awesome. Great. Now let's go back and see uh, the Android build. So same thing for Android. Everything seems to be working fine. It's installing Maestro, which is great. Then it's starting the Android emulator, installing the app on the emulator, and then it's running the Maestro test. So as you can see, the home.yaml test was uh, successful. It was able to launch the app and assert that we had the welcome text. And now it's running the expand text, which is a more complex flow. And it seems that it is working fine. Okay. And something interesting, interesting happened here. It seems that for Android, it wasn't able to assert that the learn more was visible. I'm thinking maybe the size of the screen of the simulator is a bit different, but anyways, um, I'm glad that we are able to see like a successful test case and also how it looks when it fails. So yeah, as an example, I think it's great. And finally, it's uh, uploading the Maestro test results. And that's it. We have successfully set up end-to-end -end testing with Maestro for our Expo app and run tests on EAS build. Remember, good testing is key for delivering a high quality app experience. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this. If you have any questions or run into any issues, leave a comment below and I'll be happy to help. I'll see you in the next one.